Geometric nonlinearity uh, is the topic of discussion uh, for this week's uh, lectures. In this video, particularly, I'll give you an introduction on the basics of geometric nonlinearity. We'll start with a basic definition what are the different types of nonlinearities, followed by some fundamental concepts that must be gotten out of the way before we can go about defining the finite element formulation for, a, for a, any element. Uh, that needs to be solved for geometric nonlinear conditions. Geometric nonlinearity in general arises when the deformations in a body are large enough so that they can alter the distribution or the orientation of the applied loads. Or it can also be influential to change the orientation of the internal resisting forces and moments. That means it has an effect on the strains. So in general, if you consider examples such as a vault, uh, pole vault, the Walters pole resists a load, which is mainly the load by area, which is the stress, uh, which can be considered in the form of a beam stress, so my by i, uh, which is directed tangent to the pole. Depending on whether it's almost straight, then it will have the p by a stress, and when it is uh, bent, then it's going to be tangential, which would be related to the moment and the uh, inertia. Now, in general, as you can imagine, the geometric nonlinearity in this case with the pole vault is dependent on a very large displacement of a point in an object. But you can also consider geometric nonlinearity to be active when you have uh, small displacements, but you have large deformations, which uh, are accounting for the large strain kind of problems. So that is the basic definition of geometric nonlinearity. So in a standard equation, you can also imagine that the KU is equal to F. We've always studied about, so far with the examples, we thought we kept on uh, working on the material nonlinearity side of it. So we always made sure that within this particular equation, there was the term K, which was continuously updated with respect to U. But in terms of geometric nonlinearity, you will also have the force, which is going to be changing with respect to the displacement or the de uh, deformation of the object in question. There are, of course, two particular types of or geometric nonlinearities. So let's discuss the types. The first one is to do with large deformation. Or you can also say large strains. The other one is large displacements but do not necessarily have large strain so they can be large displacement and small strain problems the most common examples for aerospace structural applications are to do with the second type of geometric nonlinearity which are to do with large displacements but small strains and the reason is most of these aerospace structures are slender structures. So you have thin plates, lightweight, which means that you could have a large displacement of a point in the structure, but the strain or the strain that's happening or deformation within the part is quite small. These are the two different types of non-geometric non-linearities that you are going to face time and again. Now, the biggest difficulty with geometric non-linear analysis is that when you have, even if you have defined that it's a geometrically nonlinear problem, you must solve the equilibrium equations to get the response. And the equilibrium equations in any uh, nonlinear problem, or specifically for a geometric nonlinear problem, they have to be written with respect to the deformed geometry. And the reason why we want to write it with respect to the deformed geometry is precisely because of these two conditions that happen in a structure large deformation is going to make make sure that the structure has changed considerably so at the time at a certain time t during which the load is applied the large deformation has changed the structure of the uh, changed the the shape or the definition of the structure that is under question in large displacements a certain point in the reference object has moved over a certain distance causing this large displacement to occur 
That means it is in a completely different configuration as related to the base or the reference configurations. And therefore, in order to solve the equilibrium equations correctly for the nonlinear problems, we must consider all the uh, kinematic and the constitutive relations with respect to the deformed geometry or the displaced geometry. And in most cases, or almost all realistic examples, this deformed geometry is not known to us in advance. Of course, any geometrically nonlinear problem may also have um, material nonlinearity or contact based nonlinearity, so it can be a combined nonlinear problem. Just as a side note. Now, as I've already introduced to you, that all the equilibrium equations have to be solved with respect to the deformed geometry. We cannot use the terms of strains and stresses that we have been introduced to before, like engineering strains in general or the stresses that we have used to define an object with reference frame. They, those are now no longer applicable apart from the initial configuration or the reference configuration of your structure. So once your load or your displacement is time dependent, the configuration of your structure is also going to change which is why we need to define some very important terms or basic or these fundamental concepts. First, we will start by describing within these fundamental concepts, we will start by describing some configurations with respect to the structure, but also with respect to the nonlinear analysis. Then we will discuss some uh, specific terms that are used to describe the changes that happen because of this nonlinear uh, problem. First of all, a distinction will be made between the spatial and the material frame. The strains will not be engineering strains anymore, but will be represented by the green Lagrange strain tensor. And the stresses will be represented by the second piola kirchhoff stress tensor. For those of you who have some background in continuum mechanics, these things will come very easily. We will not go into a lot of details about it, but we will go through it uh, in step-by-step -step manner to understand where these come from because these are the terms that are going to be used to solve the equilibrium equations for the finite element formulation.